Hi, and welcome. This video introduces cross number 14, a new breeding experiment involving two guppies from cross 8. There will be a lot of genetic discussion, and the male, with a striking iridescent forehead, is a key player in this cross. I hope to incorporate this unique trait into my Snow White line. For new viewers, I'm Ivan, and I'm aiming to establish a stable Snow White guppy line. The pedigree of my guppies is becoming quite long and confusing, so I'll show just the relevant line for this cross. Cross 14 is a new experiment involving two siblings from cross 8. These siblings are descendants of Gandalf and female 2 from cross 2. By pairing these closely related individuals, I hope to concentrate specific traits for future generations. Cross 14 is a complex experiment compared to my previous ones. Predicting the color outcomes will be challenging due to uncertainties about the parents' genotypes for certain traits. Before diving into the genetics, let's explore why I chose these specific guppies for this cross. I've labeled the male as C8AM as he's the first male selected from cross 8. Similarly, the female is labeled C8BF, being the second female chosen from that generation. The first set of females from cross 8 were used in cross 13. It is pretty obvious that my C8A male does not look like a typical Snow White guppy. Setting up this cross might seem counterintuitive because it deviates from the Snow White line I am currently working towards. I don't have a good argument against that. On the face of it, this cross will lead to increased phenotypic variation rather than a decrease. To reach my goal of a line that breeds true, I ultimately need to reach a point where each cross only produces a single phenotype, which is also repeatable. However, a unique trait emerged in cross 8 that captured my attention. An iridescent forehead on one of the males. This was the only instance of this trait in the brood, and the entire selective breeding tree for that matter. And you probably already guessed it, but I want this trait integrated into my Snow White line. I think this would add a stunning visual element to the fish that'll enhance their overall appearance. So, to increase the chances of producing more guppies with the iridescent forehead trait, I decided to pair the male with a sister from cross 8. A sibling has a higher likelihood of carrying the necessary genes to express this trait in their offspring. When selecting the female for this cross, I opted for a blonde-based female. This would allow me to easily identify the genotype of any gray-based offspring. The C8A male stood out due to his unique iridescent forehead. To complement this trait, I chose a female with a uniform light blue hue in her tail, a characteristic that was also not seen in her females. I figured that maybe, just maybe, the female's uniqueness from her sisters was a good indicator that pairing her with the unique C8A male might increase the odds of producing offspring with the iridescent forehead. I like the uniform tail of this C8B female compared to other females with color only on the tail tips. While not the primary focus, my hope is that this trait could potentially contribute to developing snow white females with enhanced coloration in future generations. Here is where I delve into the genetics of this pair and discuss the expected outcomes. I'll review the four genes contributing to the Snow White phenotype, which I've covered in previous videos, but Cross 14 introduces some additional complexities compared to Cross 11 and 13. Next, I'll talk about what could happen with regard to the iridescent forehead trait. If you'd like to skip to the iridescent forehead section, go to the next chapter indicated by the timestamp on the bottom right corner. If you'd like to skip the genetics and prediction sections entirely, go to the chapter indicated by the timestamp on the bottom left corner. Alright, 
So I'll start by listing the four genes involved in a table. These are base body color, European blau, Storzbach, and magenta. For each gene, we'll compare the genotypes of the C8A male and C8B female. The last column will show a Punnett square estimate for the likelihood the offspring will carry the correct combination of alleles for the specific gene necessary for the snow white phenotype. Our male is heterozygous for the gray based body color, while the female is homozygous for the blonde based body color. A typical snow white phenotype is blonde based and this cross is expected to produce 50% blonde based offspring. Our male exhibits some red pigmentation, suggesting he is not homozygous for European blau. However, as he inherited a recessive allele from his father, Gandalf, he is likely heterozygous for this trait. The female, lacking red pigmentation, is likely homozygous for European blau. European blau is likely necessary for a snow white phenotype and this cross is expected to produce 50% European blau expressing offspring. Next, let's consider Storzbach. I am quite confident our male is expressing Storzbach, indicating a homozygous genotype. Personally, I can't visually tell if the female is expressing Storzbach or not. But having inherited a recessive allele from Gandalf, she has a 50% chance of being homozygous for it. So we can expect 50% of the offspring expressing Storzbach if the female is heterozygous and 100% if the female is homozygous. Finally, let's discuss magenta. I've been assuming Gandalf is homozygous for it and I still think that that is true. This means both our male and female have at least one dominant magenta allele. Since their mother, C2A, was homozygous for magenta, there's a chance that our pair also carries a recessive allele. This is an interesting side note. Phenotypically, offspring only need one dominant allele to express magenta. So, if either parent is homozygous for magenta, all offspring will inherit this trait. The question now is, what's the likelihood of this happening? Both our male and female could be either homozygous or heterozygous for magenta. If we look at the pair together, this leads to four possible combinations. I'll list them out. One, both of them are homozygous for magenta, which would result in all offspring expressing magenta. Two, the male is homozygous and the female is heterozygous. This would again result in all offspring expressing magenta. Three, the male is heterozygous and the female is homozygous, swapped compared to the previous combination, but still results in all offspring expressing magenta. Four, both the male and female are heterozygous. This is the only combination that can result in 75% of the offspring that express magenta and 25% that don't. So, given these four possibilities, there's a 75% chance that all offspring will express magenta. These are good odds, but even in the worst case scenario of both parents being heterozygous, 75% of their offspring would still exhibit the magenta trait. Given the potential variations in the Storzbach and magenta genes, predicting the exact outcomes becomes complex. Ideally, both parents are homozygous for these traits, simplifying the genetic possibilities. In this best case scenario, the primary factors influencing the offspring's phenotypes would be base body color and European blau, leading to four possible color combinations that we've seen versions of in previous crosses. The first phenotype is the classic blonde based snow white. As I continue to breed for this phenotype, I'm getting closer to my goal of a true breeding snow white line. The next phenotype is the gray based snow white. These guppies should resemble C7AM, the male used in cross 13. They might also exhibit some black spotting. The third phenotype is a blonde based guppy with a light red or pink hue. 
This phenotype is quite a common occurrence and has appeared in all the back crosses so far. Lastly, a gray-based light red that should look just like their C8A father. However, this best case scenario assumes both parents are homozygous for Storzbach and Magenta. If either gene is heterozygous, the number of possible phenotypes will double, leading to eight potential outcomes. In the worst case scenario, where both genes are heterozygous in both parents, the number of phenotypes could further double to 16, granted heavily skewed towards magenta expressing offspring. Fingers crossed for the best case scenario. Okay, this might be a lot to take in, but I've gradually introduced these concepts in previous videos. If you've been following along, this should be familiar. This is also why I add chapters for you to skip ahead if needed. These videos focus on the specific genes relevant to my crosses and may not be comprehensive guides, but they should provide a solid foundation for understanding the current discussion. Moving on to the iridescent forehead trait, the primary reason for this pairing. I'm still uncertain about its inheritance pattern. I haven't found much information on this specific trait, so if you have any insights, it would be greatly appreciated. Everything I talk about now might end up being wrong and can change when I get new information or data, but I have to start somewhere. So I will start with what I know. Gandalf does not have this trait. Looking at his forehead, it is pretty clear it lacks the iridescence that the C8A male has. This suggests that the trait originated from female 2, the grandmother of C8AM and C8BF. A closer look at female 2 reveals similarities to a female blue dragon guppy. It's not exact, but it's close. Some male blue dragons exhibit the iridescent forehead trait, suggesting that female 2 might indeed be the source of this trait in our C8A male. After pairing female 2 with Gandalf to produce cross 2, I unfortunately don't recall if any male offspring expressed the iridescent forehead trait. I only just started the breeding project then, and I wasn't as attentive to anomalies. My gut says that there weren't any that did. However, there were only four male offspring in that entire cross. So it is possible that we just didn't get lucky with an expressing male. So this generation is a question mark and will likely remain this way until more data is collected. Only one out of 15 males in cross 8 exhibited the iridescent forehead trait, suggesting that multiple genes might be involved in its expression. While it's difficult to pinpoint the exact number of genes, I suspect at least one of them is dominant and sex-linked on the X chromosome. Let's make a few assumptions to perform a simple case analysis. I'll assign the symbol IF to the iridescent forehead trait, and I'm going to assume that it is a dominant X-linked trait and female 2 is homozygous for it. Given that Gandalf lacks this trait, we can assume he has the recessive. A Punnett square analysis of cross 2 suggests that all female offspring should be heterozygous for the iridescent forehead trait, while all males should inherit and express it. This could have happened, but it seems unlikely because I think I would have noticed if all the males had an iridescent forehead. Alternatively, if female 2 was heterozygous for the iridescent forehead trait, only half of her offspring, both male and female, would inherit it. This seems like a more plausible case compared to the first one. This scenario is more likely as the small number of male offspring in cross 2 could have explained the lack of males expressing the iridescent forehead trait. A complication arises when we consider cross 8, where a potentially heterozygous female from cross 2 was backcrossed with Gandalf. Based on the expected inheritance pattern, approximately half of the offspring should have inherited and expressed the iridescent forehead trait, at least for the males. However, only one male exhibited this trait, suggesting a more complex genetic mechanism. 
This is why I think additional genes might be involved in the expression of the iridescent forehead trait. But I'm unsure how. It would have to also be dominant because if it were recessive, Gandalf's genes would have masked its expression entirely. Without getting too deep into the weeds, if the secondary gene is autosomal dominant and female C2A was heterozygous for it, then a quarter of the males should have expressed the iridescent forehead trait. However, this theoretical prediction still doesn't align with the observed 1 in 15 ratio. A 4-gene model could potentially explain the 1 in 15 ratio, but it's premature to speculate without more data, and I'm not ready to do that, especially if it all turns out wrong anyway. Instead, I'll wait on the outcomes of cross-14. I hope to produce multiple offspring with the iridescent forehead trait to further understand its genetic basis. Having the C8A male with the iridescent forehead trait paired with his C8B sister who shares similar genetics, theoretically increases the chances of producing offspring with this trait. I'm optimistic for a 50% success rate. To summarize the genetic side of this video, CROSS14 involves four key genes that will determine the offspring's phenotypes. In the best case scenario, approximately 25% of the offspring could exhibit the Snow White phenotype. However, depending on the parent's genotypes, the number of possible phenotypes could range from 4 to 16. I also anticipate seeing familiar color combinations like gray-based Snow White, pink, and potentially new variations. Additionally, I hope to see more offspring with the iridescent forehead trait which is a unique characteristic that I'm eager to explore. If we're lucky, a Snow White Guppy with an iridescent forehead can pop up, and that would just be awesome. As we continue our breeding experiments, we'll gradually unravel the genetic mechanisms behind this trait. To further investigate the inheritance of the iridescent forehead trait, I plan to also pair the C8A male with a female from Cross 11. This cross will provide valuable insights to the genetics of the iridescent forehead trait with the minimized influence of other genetic factors, because cross 11 is nearing a true breeding snow white line. Cross 11 offspring will likely be used several more times for other crosses as well. Given that our C8A male will be used in more than one cross, it's fitting to give him a name. I'm considering names like Glader and Fiernan inspired by his brilliant scales, but they didn't fully capture his appearance. He wasn't gold, and he only had small amounts of green. Ultimately, I chose Thorn, due to his reddish hue and brilliant scales. I hope you found this video informative. We've covered a lot of ground, from the intricacies of Cross 14 to future breeding plans. To stay updated on the progress of Cross 14, please consider subscribing. I have several other ongoing crosses, and the next video will be the final update on cross 9. I'll examine the final phenotypes and draw the cross to a close. Here are some quick updates on my other crosses. Cross 12 has been decommissioned. There will not be a dedicated follow-up video on this cross. They have not produced offspring and likely will not. Cross 11 is still increasing in number, and I have separated three additional males that also look like they are Snow Whites. The fry in Cross 13 are growing and getting close to revealing the first signs of color. If you'd like to see where Cross 14 started from, check out this playlist with all the update videos that follows the lineage of Cross 2. It will start simply and expand in complexity as more traits reveal themselves. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.